Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. I'm E.G. Marshall, comprador of all the fiends and felons, plus some poor, plain, unfortunate fellows who must regularly report for duty at this time and place. Trust none, advises William Shakespeare. Trust none, for oaths are straws. Men's faiths are wafer cakes, and holdfast is the only dog. Trust none. Surely we should be able to trust somebody. No, not according to some of the greatest English poets. Didn't Kipling say, he travels fastest who travels alone? The following is a dramatic essay in trusting one's fellow man. And what may come of it. Don't look now, but the man near the window is a police detective. Would he suspect me? A good policeman suspects everybody. He's coming this way. Maybe he isn't after you. But if I'm found in civilian clothes... You mustn't try to get away. You'll only look guilty. With Ford's papers? Uh, look, do they have the right to shoot me? Oh, it's hard to say. They might, they might not. It all depends. On what? Uh, who knows? Uh, he's coming. Try not to look guilty. Our mystery drama, Overnight to Freedom, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars William Redfield. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. World War II, it seems so long ago and far away. Such ancient history. Half the people living today weren't born till after it was over. And yet, for those who survived it, World War II can never be forgotten. We're about to meet a survivor. The year is 1943. World War II rages toward its fiery climax. We're in a railroad station in Glasenheim, an industrial city in central Germany. A young man who appears to be a French volunteer from the cut of his clothes is sitting on a bench. He is whispering something to himself. The Café de la Paix on the Rue Napoleon. Ask for Mr. Lafayette. The Café de la Paix on the Rue Napoleon. Ask for Mr. Lafayette. No, no. Or is it the Café Napoleon on the Rue de la Paix? Or the Café Lafayette on the... No, no. I had it right the first time. The young man lights a cigarette and begins to puff nervously. A middle-aged man who wears a beret watches intently. Now the middle-aged man casually saunters over to the bench and sits down next to the young one. He unfolds a newspaper. He pretends to read. Now he begins to talk in a quiet, confidential tone. You must do something about that cigarette. What? Keep your voice low. You smoke like an American. Who, who are you? Shh, shh, shh. Just listen very slowly, very casually. Grasp the cigarette between your thumb and your forefinger. Light it end pointed out. Yes, good. Ah, that's better. You are an American, aren't you? A prisoner of war. And you're trying to escape. Oh, I, uh, I think you're mistaken. Uh, all things considered, you could pass for a Frenchman in those clothes. A volunteer French worker going on a furlough. Why not? I, I, I assure you, sir, I... Smile. What are you? Smile. 
people going home on a furlough should look happy. Well, what are you going to do? I said smile. What are you going to do about me? Help you escape. You... You will? Why? Because I'm a Frenchman. Oh, yeah? And why did you volunteer to come to Germany and work for the enemy? You'd be surprised how many defective fuses we can put on the shelves. Uh, uh -uh. What is it? The one in the trench coat. I think he's a detective. He must be looking for me. When will your escape from the camp be noticed? I, uh, I guess not for another hour. Then don't start to worry now. Your French, it's excellent. A bit cultured for a workman, but... Well, uh, I was a European language major at college before I was drafted. That cop is looking at me. Yawn. What? A big yawn and stretch your arms. Oh. As if you didn't have a worry in the world. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh. Bigger. You better get away from me. I said I would help you. They shoot civilians who help POWs. My name is... No. Don't tell me your name. When I'm captured, it'll be better if I didn't know it. I'll just call you pal. Why did you say you'll be captured? Because this escape, this whole thing, it's... It's just crazy. It... It can't work. Why? It's a long story. Do you have a passport? Papers? Yes, yes, yes. I've got all that. You look like a Frenchman. You talk like a Frenchman. You have papers... Why shouldn't you succeed? Because that cop, he's looking at me. And don't tell me it's my imagination. He's looking at me. Yeah, he isn't looking at you. He's looking at her. Who? The blonde. Oh, not bad looking. Headed this way. And she will sit down right next to you. Oh, great. Every cop in the station is looking her over. Flirt with her. What? Are you good at picking up girls? I've been a prisoner so long, I forgot how. Remember, in a hurry. It's normal to flirt with a pretty girl. Be normal. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, do you, uh, uh, are you uh, waiting for the train, Fraulein? No. I just like to come to the station and feed the pigeons. Well, what pigeons? Uh, oh, <laughs> I see. You uh, care for a cigarette? Thank you. Say, these are American. Oh, yes. Well, well you see, uh, uh, we have uh, prisoners of war at this, uh, at this place where I work, and you know. Oh, they're you know. wonderful. I mean the cigarettes, not the prisoners. Dankeschön. Bitteschön. French, aren't you? Oh, and here I thought my German was so good. Oh, it's too good. No native speaks that well. Only a foreigner who learns German in a university. Oh, I'll, I'll have to remember that. Where are you going? Now, see, it's, uh, it's my furlough. Isn't that a coincidence? I'm going to Nancy, too. I'm a lab technician at the German military hospital. Oh. I've just been home on a holiday. Oh, my name is Ursula Reinmuth. Oh, I'm George Mc... I, I mean, uh, my, uh, my name is Louis. <laughs> Which is it, George or Louis? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's both. I, <laughs> I was named George Louis, but oh. Louis, Louis Cardinet, that's, that's the name on my papers. Do you... Work here in Glassenheim? Work, uh, yes. Where? Where? At the, uh, Dikoff Bauman workshops. You can't be serious. Why, why not? You were sent from heaven to save my life. I was? You know my father. I do? Everybody knows Papa. He's plant manager at Dikoff Bauman, Otto Reinmuth. Oh, Herr Reinmuth. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Now, here's how you're going to save my life. You see, Papa hates for me to travel on the train alone. Too many soldiers. Papa doesn't trust soldiers. That's because he was once a soldier himself. Anyhow, when he sees you... When he sees me? Of course, he'll be here any second. Here? Of course. He wants to see me off. So I can say to him, Papa, I'm not traveling alone. I'll be with one of your own workmen, Louis Cardinet. Oh, will Papa be glad to see you? Uh, look, uh, uh, could you excuse me, please? I, I have this terrific toothache. I, I better go to see if I can find something. Oh, you won't find anything around here. But I may have just the thing. A little bottle of cognac right here in my bag. Ah, yes. This will fix it. Take a sip. Oh, but I... I... But say, I'm a medical technician. I know what is what. There. Isn't that better? 
Now, let's save some for later. Do you, uh, have a compartment? Uh, uh no, I, I... I mean, you're going to stand up in that crowded corridor all night? Well, the, uh... I, I guess the military get the priority. Well, I'm in a compartment. And as soon as somebody gets off, why don't you just come inside? I rode in the corridor coming home. Fifty people packed in that narrow space. Hey, uh... Uh, uh, the train's coming. We'd better go to the platform. Oh, no. We have to wait for Papa. Oh, what could be keeping him? If he doesn't hurry, he'll miss us. Oh, that would be terrible. <gasps> There's Papa. Just come in the door, see? Look, I, I have to. I, I, I promised I'd help my friend with his luggage. Oh, no. I'm holding on to you for dear life. If he sees I'm traveling with you, I can leave without one of his famous lectures. Can't he just curl your hair, though, when he gets started? But, but look, Isn't I... Isn't that typical? He stops to talk with that fellow near the window. Papa knows everybody. Listen, you have got to be a good, reliable fellow. Otherwise, you'd never have learned to furlough. And that means you're one of Papa's favorites. But we'll miss the train. Oh, there's plenty of time. I'll make him hurry. Papa? Papa? Over here! Oh, when he gets involved in a conversation... Look, could you help me out? Help you? I, I know I don't have the right to ask, but sometimes you meet someone for the first time and you, and you feel that you... I, I don't know how to explain. Well, maybe you don't have to. Papa? Over here. I'm over here. I don't want your father to see me. Papa, hurry. What did you say? I'd rather he didn't see me. What do you mean? Look, I had to work overtime to get the furlough, and it, it got to be so late last night that I, I just couldn't finish the, 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 the polishing of several outer casings. Oh. I mean, it's nothing serious or even important. that No one would even notice. Oh, Papa would. And, and you know, I, oh, I'm it's just... It's a good thing you told me. Papa could make you go back there and finish right now. Yes. Do I ever know Papa? Oh, he's coming now. I don't think he sees you. You better go to the platform. Yes. Yes, I'd better. I'll see you on the train. I'll see you on the train. And so far, not bad, huh? Oh, yeah. See how you used your head with that girl back in the station? I never thought so many people could jam into a corridor. Isn't it the same on trains in America? We have different trains. Why do you look so nervous? Well, I... To tell you the truth, I'm scared. Well, I just try to relax. You'll be all right. Maybe I'd have been better off if I was still in the stalag. The thing with that girl in the waiting room, it was... I don't know, it was just too much for me. Oh, you were magnificent. Yeah, but it made a wreck out of me. I can't live that way. I'm not that kind of person. I... I I'm... I... What is it? I forgot my name. The name that's on my papers. The name of the person I'm supposed to be. What if the police come by and ask me? But so far, they're not here. Now, wait a minute. I told that girl my name back in the station. You heard me. Do you remember? Yes. Well, tell me. No. No? But you said you'd help me. It wouldn't be helping. Look, you're starting to panic. You bet your life. You must work your way out just as you did with the girl. Have they the right to shoot me if I'm caught wearing these clothes and with stolen papers? Well, these Germans shooting or not shooting, it's never a matter of right or law. It's a whim, an attitude, a policy. There's a war. Pal, the very best day in my whole life was the day they took me prisoner. They dumped me into the Stalag at Glossenheim. Where you freeze and you starve and heaven help you if you get sick, but at least I was alive. And with luck, I could keep alive till it was over and I could go home. Smile, smile. Your face is becoming intense. Intense people arouse suspicion. I had good friends. You can escape, George. Only you can pull it off. You know why? Well, you parlez français, you sprechen deutsch. They didn't ask me, they told me. And they risked their lives to steal every stitch of clothes I'm wearing. Plus money and papers. And they figured a way to get me out of there. I didn't want to go, but could I say no? I don't have a prayer of getting away with this. What I feel like doing right now is going up to the nearest cop and say, take me back to the Stalag. My name is... <sighs> now I remember. The name on my papers is Louis. Louis Cardinet. Ah, and just in time. See, see, at the head of the car, those two SS officers, they're checking to see if everyone has papers. Oh, no. 
They're looking at papers. They're examining papers. Just be they calm. Be calm. These guys mean business. You see how they're staring at that man's papers? My friend, you do have papers, don't you? Papers. I do, and I don't. Well, what does that mean? It means I have papers that, that I can flash, but not the kind of papers that can really be examined. Are they forged? No, 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 no. no. They're real. A buddy stole them from that machine shop in Glassenheim. There is a guy named Louis Cardenet. Except he's twice my age and half my size. Yeah, well, there's no help for it. You will have to show the papers. But I can't. Do not panic. I gotta get out of here. Where can you go? Out the other end of the car. If I have to, I'll jump off the train. Maybe I can climb onto the roof. You can't do that. It's worth a try. Ah, it's too late. See? Another team of SS inspectors has just entered. Both exits are blocked. Oh, now what am I gonna do? Think, my friend. Think of something. These days, people who are being faced with the making of a decision usually say, let us review our options. Corporal George McAllister, who is escaping from a German prison camp, has only one, and that is to show his stolen identification papers. Unless, of course, he can think of something. What can he possibly think of in the short space we have between now and the second act? One night in the late spring of 1943, a train is speeding from Glassenheim, Germany, to Nancy in occupied France. The train is filled with German soldiers, officials, businessmen, volunteer workers from the conquered countries, and one escaping American prisoner of war. He's dressed as a French volunteer worker. His stolen passport identifies him as Louis Cardinet. His problem is he doesn't look very much like a Louis Cardinet. I tell you, pal, my papers aren't good enough to be examined the way that fat man is checking them. My friend, sooner or later, you will have to show those papers. Not to that mean-looking fat one. I know his kind from back in camp. Now you listen to me and you'll be all right. How can I be all right? Believe me, they depend on fear. Stare them down. You are Louis Cardinet, a machinist who has worked loyally for the glory of the new order. You are going home on furlough. There can be no question about you or your documents. This attitude is what they must read on your face when you hand them your papers. Oh, sure. Stare them down. They don't read the papers, they read your face. Let them read confidence. I knew I shouldn't have taken the train. It's the <laughs> quickest way to go. Go? Where? But you sh surely you know where you are going. I ever get there. Why shouldn't you get there? It's a certain place in Nancy. A cafe where the underground is supposed to smuggle me back to England. Oh, that's good. I go there and I give them a certain password. Papers. Papers. That officer, that fat one, he's working his way closer. He scares me. Remember what I said? Look him in the eye. Hello. Oh, uh, oh, hello. I've been looking all over for you, Louis. Enjoying the trip? It's fabulous. A woman in my compartment is getting off in about an hour from now, so there'll be room for you. Uh, that is, if you can tear yourself away from your friend. <laughs> oh, mind if I hold on to your arm? Sure. The train sways so much. Papers, papers. Are you sure you're a Frenchman? Oh, why do you ask? You're the shyest Frenchman I ever met, if you know what I mean. But that makes you very interesting. Oh, how's Hugo? Uh, who? Who? Hugo Heilman, chief draftsman at the shop. Oh, Herr Heilman. Yeah, yes. Well, you know. How's you... his wife? Oh, uh, about what you'd expect. I know what you mean. What did they name the little girl? The little... Oh, uh, uh, Brigitte. Yeah. Brigitte? I can't believe that. How could he not name the baby after that rich old aunt of his, Margaret? That's right, that's right. I'm sorry, he did. I, I was thinking of someone else. Sure, yes, he, he, he named her, uh, Little Margarita. You know, the old girl may not leave him her money anyhow. Oh? Here are your papers. Yes, sir, here they are. Your papers, Fraulein. My papers? My papers. Oh, they're right here in my bag. Right here. Oh. oh, no. Now that I look, I don't... See, I don't have them in my... Oh, I know. 
They're in my suitcase back in my compartment. Papers must be available for inspection at all times. Oh, that's certainly true, sir. I I'll go get them. Papers. I said papers. What's the matter, you stupid foreigner? Don't you understand? Uh, the, the poor fellow, he's not feeling well. Keep out of this. You, your papers. What's your name? Uh, my, uh, uh, my name? Your name and your papers. But yes, y y yes, I, I have them. I Hand them over. <laughs> Remain here until I get back. Out of my way. Hunt, Busterman, who have you got? Now's my chance. I'll go out the other door and try for the roof. It's impossible. I can't face him. I fell apart. You saw it happen. I couldn't control it. Everything just became unglued, unstuck. Well, put yourself back together. You see, they caught somebody. The other guards are dragging him off, and here's Fatso making his way back. I can't face him. I can't. Not now. Louis. Look, I need time. Just a little bit of time, and I'll be all right. I'll find you sometime. Well, how? Here, here. Go into this compartment. But who, who, who's in there? Soldiers. Soldiers? They're in a good mood. Just came off furlough. Are you crazy? You're a soldier. You can get, get along with soldiers. But these are German soldiers. Soldiers are soldiers. In you go. <laughs> uh, gentlemen. Hey, what's this? Uh, this, this? This poor fellow needs a little fresh air. He's a patriotic Frenchman who has been working for the Führer in the factory. Oh, hey, it's the Frenchman with the good looking blonde who was back at the station in Glasenheim. Yeah. Uh, come on in. Have a drink. Oh. You'll be all right, Louis. You'll be all right. Yeah, sure. Hey, hey, where's your girlfriend? Go bring her in. Yeah, we could make her very happy. Yeah, right, fellas? Yeah, bring her in. Right. Let him alone, Gerhard. Well, well, what am I doing, Heinrich? Nothing. Don't say I want to be friendly, that's all. You see, Frenchie, me and my buddies here, we are the happiest guys in the world, and we want everybody to be happy. Right? Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know why we're happy, huh? <laughs> we're being transferred to France. No more Russia. <laughs> La belle mademoiselle France. <laughs> right, Frenchie? Oh, oh, oh. oh hey, uh, we, uh, we, we can't keep calling you Frenchie. Uh, I'm Gerhardt, that's Heinrich, and Willy, and Johann, uh, and uh, Fritz, and Wolfie. What's your name? Uh, Louis. Uh, Louis Cardinet. Louis Cardinet. Whoa, now, that's a real French name. <laughs> hey, who's got a small... Oh, please, try try one of mine. Hey! And these are American cigarettes. What? Where did you ever... Well, they have a, a, a prison camp near Glasenheim. Some of the American prisoners work in my factory. You know, we, 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 we trade. American cigarettes? Guard them with your life. They cost a fortune. Aren't you smoking, Louis? Well, it, it's bad for my lungs. I, I, I just carry these for friends. Uh, uh, hey, hey, Louis, uh, you sit by the window. Uh, open it wide, Wolfie. Let Louis have your seat. There you go. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, hey, Louis, that girl you were with here, I see, uh, she's your girlfriend, but uh, Heinrich said that you picked her up. Well, I, I... I saw how he did it, Gerhard. It was a pickup. You know, for a whole hour back in that waiting room, I'd been tr trying to make her. <laughs> How'd you do it? Oh, what kind of question is that? He's got his technique. Yeah. Louis, among comrades, how are the French girls? Well, I don't want to spoil it for you. You'll find out for yourself. <laughs> Words from a master. Oh, too bad you had to be in the French army. <laughs> How do you know he was in the army, Gerhard? Oh, because he don't look like a draft dodger type to me. Were you in the French army, Louis? Well, uh, we can't hold it against you, Louis. Uh, yes, I, 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 I was in the army. I bet you were infantry. Machine gunner. Hey, 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 you see, we're all soldiers together, so let's straight to the infantry. <laughs> papers? Well, it's our friend the SS. Papers, papers. Uh, what do you say, fatso? Have a drink. The civilian first. Now, it's you. Hand me your papers. What are you yelling at the poor man for, huh? Yeah, uh, type down. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Now, uh, look, fatso. While the fellow's putting his papers together, come on, why not relax, have a little drink with us, huh? Drink? What's wrong with the drink? Gerhard, cut it out. I want to know what's wrong. You're drunk. Was there a law passed against drinking while I was away? Gerhard, shut up. I shall report you. For what? Disgracing the sacred uniform of a German soldier. I disgraced this uniform for 18 months in Russia, too, huh? 
Respect? Oh, damn you. Respect for a combat soldier, you... You white-livered, yellow-bellied, rear echelon commando. Yeah, huh? Eat, freeze, and starve in the foxholes while fat slobs like you are cozy and warm at home with the wine and the girls and the states and the jokes. You, you're under arrest! Let's see you take me, you pull that gun, and I'll ram it down your throat. Let's throw him out the window. Hey, wait! What happened to Louis? Louis? The civilian. Where is the civilian? Oh, poor Louis. He needed air. He must have fallen out the window. Step aside. I must stop the train. <laughs> There. See Louis? Oh, Fräulein. He must be around somewhere. If you find him before I do, tell him there's room in my compartment now. I will. Why has the train stopped? I don't know. Oh, the police. Running up and down the track. Probably looking for someone. I suppose. You tell Louis I am looking for him. Of course. Excuse oh, me. Uh, where are you going to be? I don't want to lose sight of you. Louis always manages to turn up whenever you're around. I have also been lucky. I found a friend who also managed to find room for me in her compartment. <laughs> you Frenchman. Excuse me. Have a happy trip. Thank you. Air Captain, I don't know what happened, but he's gone. The American prisoner is gone. He's not here. That's obvious, Schneider. And it's your fault. Hmm? Your fault. Me? Why am I to blame? Maybe you weigh too much. Maybe you remind him of a butcher. But there's something about you that frightens him. I'm a very nice person. Why should I frighten anyone? Where could he have gone? He is under your nose. Or should I say above your nose? On the roof. Well, let's take him right now. If that is what I wanted, I could have arrested him back at the Glassenheim station. Captain, my orders are to search the train for all fugitives and arrest them immediately. I have countermanded those orders. But if he escapes, it will be my responsibility. He is headed for Nancy. He has a connection with the French underground. If we discover this contact, we can destroy the entire escape network. But we are not under orders to do that. Our orders are merely... I saw this fellow immediately for what he was. Without my help, he couldn't even have gotten out of the railroad station. And I must keep helping him all the way to Nancy, all the way into the underground. Then we capture the lock. <laughs> Place not your trust in princes, the bard advises. From the look of things here, place not your trust in anybody. Poor George McAllister or Louis Cardinet, the game he's in is rough enough, but to have to play it against a stacked deck, well, the cards are now being shuffled for Act Three. The wheels of the train are turning, and there are wheels within wheels that are turning, too, and not all of them in the same direction. The kindly gentleman in the beret is helping George escape. Why not? He's an SS officer in disguise. He's assisting George to jump from the frying pan right into the fire. But, Captain, the safest thing for us would be to arrest him right now. Get out of this compartment and keep out of sight. I have to check papers. Let Hans and Westermann do it. You frighten him. So just hide somewhere. Please, Herr Captain, if he should escape. You realize I can be punished. I could be transferred into the infantry. Well, at least you will lose weight. Now get out of here. Louis! Louis! I know you're up there on the roof. Don't worry. You're safe. Climb down. Get in here. Oh. Get, uh, here. Let me give you a hand. That's it. Good. <laughs> Whose compartment is this? <laughs> what? What's funny? It's their compartment. The SS. What's the best place to hide from the police? 
by the police station, of course. <laughs> Your fat friend left. He thinks you are off the train. Uh, so now they are searching the countryside. I feel like a fool. I lost my head. I should have faced him down. I should have slapped the papers in his hand. I bet I could have carried it off, too. Splendid. It's what you said. It all adds up to confidence. Look him in the eye. That's the thing I always lacked, real confidence. I, I, I thought I could never succeed at anything, and the result was I, I, I didn't. The man who feels confidence radiates confidence, and that's the difference between failure and success. I can be successful. I, I feel that now. All you need is nerve. And I'm learning, thanks to you. I guess you're my guardian angel. You're always there when I need you. Uh, well, uh, Yesterday morning, I, I was hoping something would come up to upset the escape plan, you know? I, I, I didn't have enough faith in myself. But meeting you, being with you, you you helped me find belief in myself. If, if only I could repay you. Uh, I'll get my reward. Now, let's get out of this compartment. I'm scared of that girl. Oh, no, don't be. She's your guardian angel. Who suspects young lovers? Well, she acts flighty, but she's smart. Every now and then she gets in a question as if as if she's out to trap me. It may be your imagination. Stay there, Louis. Wish I could get rid of her. No, no, no. She turned the train inside out looking for you. Hey, don't fight fate, Louis. Found you finally. Is the tooth still bothering you? Well, I... We've got the medicine for it in my compartment. Come on. There's plenty of room now. We have it all to ourselves. Oh, Louis. Louis, I knew it would be like this. The real thing would be like this. Didn't you, Louis? Louis? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, yes. You're a very deep person, Louis. You're always very busy with your thoughts. You're just the kind of man I need. Do you know why? No. Why? Because I'm kind of, oh, Papa says, giddy, scatterbrained, and so I need a man who is very deep and intellectual. Oh. Then I saw you, and I knew. Then and there I knew my fate, even though you were a Frenchman. That didn't mean a thing. It didn't? Just between us, Louie. All this nationalist stuff, I, I don't go for it. Why, well, you're people, just like us Germans. Oh, but what are we doing talking politics? I don't know. Louie, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Hold me close, darling. Closer. Oh, oh Louie. I've got cold shivers running up and down my spine. Do you know Why? Because we're together. No. Because we were almost not together. Oh, Louis, this, this almost didn't happen. You don't know how close we came to not meeting. Oh. Darling, remember back there in the station at Glasenheim? Well, I was looking for a place to sit, and then I saw you. Do you know who I thought you were? Who? I thought... No... No, I better not tell you. Why not? Because it's so silly. Why is it silly? Oh, forget it. Darling, do you believe in love at first sight? Who did you think I was? Oh, it's not important. Sometimes life can be like, like a novel. Two lonely people meet and fall in love. Who did you think I was, Ursula? Say that again. What? My name. That's the first time you ever spoke my name. Say it again. Ursula. Till now, I... I always hated my name. Ursula. Ugly. I'm more the... the Lisa or Elena type. But the way you say Ursula... Oh, well, it is such a lovely name. The soft you sounds, they seem to come up from the heart. It's a... it's a divine name. Ursula. Who did you think I was... Oh, it's, it's final. I won't tell you. But why, Ursula? Why? Because you'll laugh at me. I won't. Swear? I swear. Well, back at the station, I... I thought you were... Now, you promised you wouldn't laugh. I promise. A man can lie to me, beat me, 
even betray me. But he mustn't laugh at me. I wasn't going to sit down next to you because for a moment I thought... I thought you were a Gestapo agent. Me? A Gestapo agent? <laughs> Didn't I tell you it was ridiculous? But why? Why, why would you think I was one of the secret police? Why, why would you think I was a Gestapo agent? Because you were sitting next to one. Who, who, who was sitting next to one? You were. And the two of you seemed to be having such a confidential conversation. Naturally, I thought you were colleagues. But the moment you spoke to me, I knew I was mistaken. You were a Frenchman, and then... And then I really became interested. But I wasn't sitting next to... I, I, I was talking to another Frenchman. Oh, he's a German. You must be mistaken, darling. Of course not. And he is the same man you've been talking to on the train. How do you know? My father is an important person in Glassenheim. He pointed this fellow out to me once. Oh, I know he doesn't look like an agent, but that's why he's supposed to be so good. I understand he's very big in the party, too. Oh, don't mention this to a soul. He's probably on a mission right now, and if we talk loosely, we, we could ruin everything. It's hard to believe. What am I going to do? Darling, wake uh, up. Uh, we're here. What? Nancy, we're in the station. What? Oh. Oh. Nancy. We'll go to my place for breakfast, all right? Uh, yes, all right. I have to go and brush my teeth and put on my makeup. I won't be too long. I know there is one thing a man can't stand, and that's a girl who takes forever to get ready. Wait for me here, darling. Uh, Ursula. Are you sure about the man in the beret? Oh, can't you forget about him? Oh, oh yes, dear. I've, I've forgotten all about it. And I'll be right back. Goodbye, Ursula. Goodbye? Why do you say goodbye? What, you, you're leaving me, aren't you? Well, I'm just going down the corridor for a few minutes. But you are leaving me. Uh, Louie, you are so crazy. But that's why I love you. Goodbye, Ursula. Louis, huh? where are you going? Oh, I, I, I thought I'd uh, sneak out through the window. I, I have to give her the slip. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me shut the door. I was waiting for her to leave your compartment. Oh? I have told Schneider to delay her on some pretext while you and I get out of here. You're right. We'll take the window. We? I'm part of it now. I'll see you through to the end. Oh, pal, you, you've you been so helpful. I, I'd i like to shake your hand. Of course. <laughs> oh, I better go down this street. No, no, it's no good. There's a squad of police. All civilians against the wall. Show your papers. a place to hide. But where? Where? Where can I hide? What's the best place to hide from the police? Why, the police station, of course. Police control, Lieutenant Donitz. Yes, we have the news and the man's description. About six feet tall. Yes, Yes, I have every available man scouring the city. We'll capture this American. He can't possibly get through the net. Uh, uh Lieutenant. Yes. Uh, sir, I, I have come to Nancy to... Uh... Oh, speak up. Speak up. I'm not a mind reader. Oh, uh, excuse me. I, I, I applied for a furlough so I could see my mother, but sh she isn't here in Nancy anymore. Yes? I, I found out she... She ran away with a German soldier. Hmm. Well, she's better off. Smart thing to do. Yes, but uh, what happens to my furlough? You see, I, I only was given a furlough because I, I wanted to visit my mother, but if she isn't here, do, do I still have... Why don't you to... just go out and have a good time, Frenchie? Well, suppose someone checks my papers and says, why didn't you report back? Uh, you're a good man, Frenchie. Stick around. I'll check the law out for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Lieutenant. <laughs> Respect for the law. It's what we need. Yes, sir. 
Hello, Sergeant Major. I have a little problem which you can answer. Oh, Lieutenant, I, I've been such a bother to you. No, 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 no trouble at all. Interesting point in the law. But it's been hours. Well, I get all kinds of opinions, but no facts. Too late to solve it tonight. Come by again tomorrow. Oh, Lieutenant, I... It's after curfew. How... How can I walk home? Well, I'm going off duty. I'll give you a lift. Where do you live? Oh, do you know where the Café de la Paix is on the Rue Napoleon? I, I, I live next door. Café de la Paix? Favorite hangout of mine. Lieutenant? Hmm? Oh. What's up? The uh, law says <laughs> we have to close. Well... If that's what the law says, that's what the law says. So, good night, Frenchie. See you tomorrow. Uh, good night, sir. Uh, well, mister, time for everyone to leave. Uh, bartender, I'm, uh, I'm looking for Mr. Lafayette. Are you kidding? I hadn't had any Lafayette brandy since 1939. I was told to ask for Mr. Lafayette. Who told you? Friends of mine in Germany. I don't know anybody in Germany. Mister, I'm in a jam. I'm an escaped POW, American. Oh, is that a fact? Oh, wait, I remember. I remember now. The password. It's not Mr. Lafayette. It's Lafayette. You are here. What's your name? Corporal George McAllister. You're the guy we're waiting for. Uh, Francois, no, don't shoot. No, don't shoot me. Francois is behind the door. You came in here with the Gestapo officer. Oh. You pretended to be French. What were we supposed to think? You... You were going to shoot me. You're a cool customer, friend. You sure know how to escape. Why don't you write a book? And he did. And you have just heard it. In three weeks, the underground was able to smuggle him to England, where he was assigned to an outfit that briefed soldiers in POW escape tactics. Don't you try to escape me. I shall return in a few moments. What began as an essay in trust has been expanded to include a treatise on confidence. Self-confidence. You are what you think you are. The limits to your ability are those that you yourself choose to impose. And there should be no limits to your ability to listen to us seven times each week. Our cast included William Redfield, Robert Dryden, Earl Hammond, Mandel Kramer, and Rosemary Rice. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.